Good morning. Pastor Janie and I have shared the good news of new beginnings in our last two videos. I would like to continue that with today's videos. Many of the resources I use for my videos come from our Daily Bread devotionals, and I encourage you to use it or another devotional of your choice in your Bible study this year. What? You don't have a regular Bible study? You might want to consider one for 2023. With that in mind, I would like to share several items that I have gleaned from my studies and felt seemed appropriate to challenge us in 2023. First, how do we witness? Do people know we're a Christian? No, it doesn't make us a Christian just to wear a hat or read a devotional or read our Bible. But I would like to begin with Isaiah 55, 6 through 13, which basically says, My word will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire. In our journey this year, we must remember that in this world, we all have a purpose. That purpose is to share God's word each and every day. Whether it's by wearing a hat, recalling a scripture or an important part of a scripture that you read this morning, or gleaning a little nugget from the scriptures, as we did last Sunday when we enjoyed a message by a guest speaker. We must sow the seeds. God promises the harvest. In order to do this, what do we have to do? Well, we need to study. And what do we study? We study the Word, the Bible. If you want to become a better mathematician, you study mathematics. If you want to become a better scientist, you study scientific theory. How is that any different than if you want to become a better Christian? Study what the Bible says to us, and if possible, join a study group or a Sunday school class. When two or three are gathered together in my name, that's what the Lord tells us. Gather together with other people of like-mindedness and learn to question, study, research. Because if we do, then we will be prepared to carry on conversations in our work, school, or business. How many of you find it very easy to carry on a conversation about football, basketball, sports of any nature? Do you have the same ease when describing scripture? When sharing a witness of how things have gone for you today? The second item I'd like to share with you comes from Psalms 38, 11 through 22. Lord, I wait for you. Do we? You will answer. Lord, my God. The psalmist was looking at David and understood his pains, burdens, desperation, and feeling lost. David didn't have a real good life at times, and he did some things that were not very good either. But God loved David, and David loved God. 
And David is expressing himself that, Lord, I wait for you because you will answer. Many of us today have felt this same way throughout this past year. I know it's been especially true in many churches. The burdens of disaffiliation, broken relationships, inaccurate interpretations of Scripture, misinformation, disregard for peaceful and equitable solutions have all been rather stressful. But what does God want us to do? God wants us to love each other. Love his word. The word that we can only get by reading the Bible. Not the self-help books that are out there that everybody has an opinion about how you can improve your life. Everything you need to know is in the Bible. But oftentimes we don't give the Bible a chance. Often when we feel these stresses, it brings on physical, mental, or emotional burdens. But as the scripture states, we need to wait and God will answer. God planned for the day. The day that he created us. He has planned for this day, to provide a rescue mission for us, that when we cry out to him, he will hear us. He showed that over and over to his people throughout the Bible with the Israelites. They would sin. Eventually, God would hear them, and he would save them, and they would sin again. You and I have the promise of 2 Chronicles 7 through 14. It's a very powerful statement in the scripture. If my people, which are called by my name, and turn from their wicked ways, oh, I got that wrong. Sorry, I'll have to backtrack. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sins, and heal their land. Right now, like no other time in civilization, we need to heal our land. We need to heal our churches. We need to love each other. But we need to base all of that upon the love that was given to us through Jesus Christ. The love that was given to us through those who wrote the Bible and gave us inspired words of God about how we should live. The third thing I would like to bring up today is 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 8. It's something we all desire. Whether we are Christian or not, we desire this particular scripture, which states, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. As we begin this year, 2023, we have two choices. Number one, do the same things we did the year before, or change and make a difference. Stand out, stand up, and stand strong in your faith. Paul reminded Timothy that he had finished strong. He wasn't confident because of his accomplishments, although they were many, but rather it was because he had kept the faith. As we plan for the new year, let us work to see what our faith can accomplish in 2023. We have a full year to make a difference. 
to improve our walk with God, spread the good news with those we come in contact with, and sow the seeds of a new life in Christ. Are you up to the challenge? The truth is that right now, this very moment, you can begin spreading God's word. And you say, how? I can't even get out of my home. I'm not a very good speaker. I get tongue-tied when I try to tell people something. Well, so do I, as you can see from what I did on this video a little previously. The answer is simple. If you like this video, share it. Send it to someone else. You are sowing seeds. If you don't like the video, then don't share it. But if you think there's anything in these three statements about being better in the year 2023 than we have been in the year 2022, maybe you need to stand up and share it. What could be simpler than reading something or watching something or hearing something that you agree with and share it? If you do, or even if you don't, please consider a change, a difference, a difference in an approach, going back to church. The pandemic has taken its toll on Christian society. Disaffiliations has split churches and denominations. But the thing we need to remember is that God loves us. He's never going to give up on any of us. Until we take our last breath, his hope, his prayer, is that we would accept his Son, Jesus Christ, as our Lord and Savior. You're already on your way to a great year in 2023. Until we meet again, this is Mark Carlisle of the Christ Church of Jackson video ministry team with another video that hopefully inspires you to stand up. Stand strong and stand out in your society that you run around in so that people will know who you are.